So this is the easiest way that I can explain it. In um, simple broadcasting workflows, you can see here, you're going to have a matrix that's going to direct and combine video signal with audio signal. You may have a video switcher, you may have an audio mixer like at a radio station. And then all that content is being sent through this matrix, this video switcher or this audio mixer, for example, and it's going to go to some sort of video and sound processing on the fly before that hits the transmitter and antenna. Then from there, it gets picked up by your cable provider, your satellite provider, or directly to your television set. And from there, based on your television set and how that television set or the cable box that you have or the satellite box that you have, that content gets reinterpreted and that's how you get to enjoy it, whether it is in standard definition, high definition, surround sound, or just stereo sound, or just mono sound. Live streaming for broadcast and not broadcast models works out this way. You will have a, a matrix that will combine video and audio. Uh, you may have a video switcher. You may have an audio mixer. And all these things are wired together. And they may or may not go through some sort of video and sound processing that is separate from the video and sound processing that is used on the fly to go to the transmitter and the antenna on the broadcasting workflow. This is a separate type of audio and video processing and that's why it is optional. This will then go into a streaming encoder server combination which then you will access through your internet service provider you will find a link on a website. You will open a streaming app, for example, um, iHeartRadio, if you want to listen to what's live right now on an iHeartRadio station, or a decoder app. For example, VLC is a, and it's an app, it's a piece of software that you can have in your computer that could pick up the link where the streaming is being transmitted to, and then from there also decode the signal and you can enjoy it. And then based on your device and your device variables is how you get to enjoy it, whether your computer has enough processing power to get the full 4K signal, for example, whether you have the ability to decode with the five channels of surround, the seven, the nine, the 10, etc. So all of these things and of course, your connection, if you have a slow connection, that will affect how you get to enjoy that live streaming. Uh, the perfect example that I can give you of that is that you can have an app of a radio station in your phone, and it's more than likely that when you are listening to the live stream of that broadcast, of that live broadcast, it sounds very different than from the way it sounds on the broadcasting signal. And the reason why that is, is because they are not applying any type of sound processing on the fly. So as the sound is on the board, it is directly being fed into the streaming encoder. And that's what you get to listen on the app versus the video and sound processing on the fly on the broadcasting model, because the FCC does require certain things to be done to sound and video so that it doesn't uh, overclip so that the whites are not extremely white, so that the um, frequencies do not bleed, especially on AM radio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there's on-demand streaming, the on-demand streaming workflow that you see here, where files are stored somewhere. Then through the internet service providers, you get to connect to that, let's call it a hard drive. It is a server, it is a storage server. And from there, you literally pick the file that you want to watch. And you do that either through having the direct FTP link or having the streaming app identify the file. That could be your Netflix, your Amazon video app, or your decoder or OTT. Uh, decoder can be, again, VLC is a good example, or OTT can be your cable box if you're using the on-demand function of your cable box. And then your device will take all this information, this playback of this file, and depending on how your device can decode all that information is how you get to enjoy it. For example, 
if your device is a TV and it's a 4K or high def ultra high definition set, then it may take the file, which could be standard definition at 480p, high definition at 1080p, and it could actually upscale the file video to 4K so that it fits the entire screen. And the same thing will apply on how it will interpret or decode the surround sound uh, that the file has attached when it's being played back. Some devices may play uh, five channels around, others may be play 7.1, etc, etc. So, and there's your connectivity. If your connectivity is slow, a high definition or 1080p video may show in 480p in standard def. And you can actually see this on Netflix and Amazon Video where sometimes if you hit display on your TV or on your uh, playback device, it can show you whether something is being played in its highest quality or lower quality to match the connectivity so you your signal, the playing back of the file, doesn't get interrupted. Hope this helps.